Could Dallas exercise their demons, beat Philadelphia for a third straight time and second straight week? Meanwhile, could Cincinnati revert from the shellacking they got in the Jersey shutout from the Jets? Prime time has it all. NFL Primetime is presented by E-Trade. Oh, we do love the playoffs. Hi, everybody, and welcome into NFL Primetime. So glad you are here with us. Trey Wingo, Merrill Hodge, Trent Dilfer. Guys, Brother. let me just throw a date out at you. December 28th, 1996. The president was Bill Clinton. Okay. The internet was this new thing we really hadn't figured out I yet. I like that's going to work. Tiger Woods <laughs> had yet to win a major. Whoa, whoa. That was the last time the Dallas Cowboys won a playoff game. Tried to break that drought against Donovan McNabb, who really had the dance moves and the high fives going. Those might have been what his the best heck moves was that? in the entire game. Philadelphia lost last week in Dallas, had to come back again for wild card round. After a scoreless first quarter, Tony Romo to Miles Austin, no, but show me a hanky for 500, Alex. It's pass interference. Good idea, right call? You know, I, I didn't like it. When Sheldon Brown's trying to fight for the ball, got his head turned around, that's what you look for a defender to do. Well, a little contact before he started looking. Oh, little, oh Merrill. You said it, a little contact. Lots of penalties on. on this day led to a first and goal and led to John Phillips for a touchdown. Boys up 7-0, four plays, 55 yards. Ensuing Eagles possession, Michael Vick, who did not play in the last game of the regular season, out of the Wildcat to Jeremy Macklin. Michael Jenkins slips, and goodbye. There's the big play the Eagles didn't have last week. 76 yards for the score. Let's break it down, shall we? Yeah, this is the only chance the Eagles had in this game was to steal offense. You love the play design, the guard pulls. That eats up to Marcus Ware and the safety play and run support. Then you get the one-on-one -on -one outside. Jeremy Macklin does a nice job kind of freezing Michael Jenkins with the slow play the stock block and then hey Michael Vick nice throw on the perimeter give him a chance and then hit the home run and he was off to the races we had a game which we never really had after the Cowboys scored last week next possession oh the ghosts of Tony Romo throws one late over the middle it's picked off by Sean Jones and he runs it back before he's pushed out of bounds and perhaps the defining moment of this game and maybe Tony's postseason career Wade Phillips says I, I believe we're going to challenge that that ball was not caught Excellent chance because look at the ball tips out over front of the forearm, hits the ground, comes loose, no control at all. They turn it over, it becomes an incompletion, not an interception. Kept the drive going now on third and seven. Ladies and gentlemen, Roy Williams had all of two catches in the Cowboys' final three regular season games. He had five in the first half, including that one for a big first down. And on the very next play, Romo, all that lead draw play fake to Jason Witten. Get in, Jason! No, he can't. He stopped at the one. But on the very next play, Wade says, you know, we do have a good running game, and Tashar choice was the right choice. Cowboys back up 14 to 7. Romo saying, yeah, this is our time. 3.30 left in the half. Eagles down 17 to 7. Vic out of the Wildcat. Missed times the handoff with Leonard Weaver. This is the risk you have with Michael, who hasn't played a lot of football. Yep, same thing. It makes you laugh, makes you cry. It made him laugh when they threw the ball. Now it makes you cry because that quarterback's not used to taking snaps all day long. So on the Cowboys. Boys possession. This time it's Felix Jones. He's the big threat for them. Bounces it outside, 13 yards to the five yard line. Two plays later, the key that has been the Cowboys passing game, Tony Romo, a little screen. Boy, the Eagles couldn't defend that all night long. It's 24 to 7. And just when you think it couldn't get worse for Philadelphia, it did. McNabb to Leonard Weaver, and Brady James comes up with a strip and the recovery. They reviewed it. It was ruled a fumble, led to a field goal. The boys were up by 20 at the break, 27 to 7. Third quarter, still 27 7. Anthony Spencer, hello! He takes down Donovan McNabb. Eagles forced to punt. And then the backbreaker with five and a half minutes left to go. Felix Jones, I said he was a home run hitter, and here's the home run. 73 yards for the touchdown, and look who's in Jerry Jones' box enjoying the action, former President Bush. It's 34-7, to and Merrill, that defense relentless. Look at the effort here by DeMarcus Ware. Well, you have Ware, you've got Spencer, you got the down four that dominated this football game, didn't need to blitz much. 
once those four caught control the game like the way they did. Yeah, Bobby Carpenter comes up with the recovery. Fourth Eagles turnover of the game. Fourth Cowboys sack of the game. Smiles, hugs, happy time in Jerry World. It is over. 4,706 days in the making. The playoff drought for Dallas is done. They win it 34 to 14. By the way, the 20 point margin of victory matches the largest ever for any one of the 13 teams since the merger that actually pulled off the three-peat, beating the same team three times in the same season. Dallas ran for 179 yards in the regular season finale win, two yards under 200 in the playoff win. Wade Phillips and Tony Romo finally get their first playoff victory. I thought we pretty much dominated the whole game, uh, just like we did the last time we played them. So, uh, you know, I couldn't be happier. Uh, this team has uh, held together all year. Uh, we got stronger as the year. As, at, at the end of the year, we're playing our best football, and I still think we are. We've got a good shot going in. If you're in this position, uh, it's hard to get here, as you guys can tell locally. Um, but when you get here, I think you got to be thinking you have a chance. You know, that's all you want when the season starts is you want to be in a position to you know, have a chance to win this thing and, you know, tournament's begun and we're off to a good start. I come in every game thinking we're going to win the game, so, uh, when you, you know, when you get your tail kicked, it's not a, it's not a great feeling, so I, I wasn't expecting it. I thought we would do better, um, but we didn't. Well, that Eagles offense, which, by the way, set a franchise record this year, just never got rolling against Dallas. And through the first 15 games of the regular season, only the Saints outscored the Eagles. But in the last two weeks against the Cowboys, just 14 total points. Dallas did a great job of maintaining possession. Eagles had the ball just 19 minutes and 37 seconds week 17, and just 20 minutes and 26 seconds on Saturday night. So that meant that Cowboy offense was really on track, Trent. And Tony Romo, whenever they absolutely, positively had to make a throw, he made it. He did. And quarterbacks as well as offenses should be judged on how they play in the big games in critical moments. And the, the most critical moment in a lot of football games is third down. And Tony Romo and this offense was phenomenal, especially in the first half on third down. Third night, beginning of the game, you need to extend the drive so you can create more runs. Look at Miles Austin's a Austin, the great release, getting off the defender right away, getting open. Later on, 7-7 seven, seven game, third nine, once again, Tony Romo climbing up in inside the pocket, anticipating the throw in the middle of the football field, big conversion to Creighton, and then third and 10 to Roy Williams, extending another drive, getting points. All three of these third downs resulted in points, and that's the key. You have to extend the drives. You gotta get a lead. That's done on third down. Tony Romo playing his best, and Merrill that puts their defense in an ideal position when they can convert those and turn them into points. That's why they're a good football team, mm -hmm. because they have so many things that are going well from watching the game tonight. And I think everybody knows about the Dallas Cowboys and DeMarcus Ware. You know, every offense knows about them. We got to take care of DeMarcus Ware. So they slide protections over there. They take a back over there, a tight end over there. But the way Anthony Spencer is playing, you now, we'll just fast forward to the Minnesota Vikings. They got to make a decision. They got issues. How are we going to protect both of those guys? How many players can we use to give up to protect and block those guys? And when you can bring two guys off the edge, you can influence protection. Drop out where Spencer comes around on a stunt on the run in the backfield, blows it up. Now, if they both come off the edge, you got a real issue. You don't have to blitz. You collapse the pocket. Spencer get his hands up as Donovan goes to throw it, knocks it down. And then the smartness. Look at Spencer. Even though Ware's being triple teamed, that's what you do to Ware. Well, Spencer standing there with nobody blocking him. Delay blitz. Gets after Donovan McNabb. This is a big time problem for the Minnesota Vikings. The way they're playing up front, and when you don't have to blitz, and you get quick pressure like that, your secondary is going to play a lot better. Your linebackers are going to play a lot better. And it makes it difficult. It collapses not just the pocket. It collapses your offense. Right. I mean, you, you, so many things you can't do now, and when you start doing that, it limits you, and that's, it's hard to win. It's hard to win the NFL when it collapses and condenses your offense like they do. Well, the only problem for the Cowboys on this night, and the Eagles too, flags, penalties everywhere, 228 penalty yards, uh, an NFL postseason record. But listen, 
This Cowboys team now has won four straight games. You mentioned Minnesota. That's where they're going next. We've seen teams catch lightning in a bottle late in a season the last couple of years. How dangerous is this Cowboys team right now? Well, I, listen, I know you mentioned the penalties. I see very few flaws, very few. Things. They control the line of scrimmage on both sides of the ball. On offense, they can do whatever they want, running game at you, on the perimeter, passing game, vertical, short. Defensively, they can get after you if they're down for. They can blitz if they want or they don't have to. What a luxury. I've made you a believer, Merrill Hodge. I believe that I Dallas Cowboys earlier, are the best team in football right now because they don't have that many holes. I mean, this team, if it can play clean football, don't turn it over, play well on special teams, and limit the penalties, is the hottest team in football, the best team in football. I believe it is because the defense, more than anything else, I don't believe there's a dominant defense in the NFL this year, but I believe the Cowboys are playing dominating defense when it matters the most right now. Like Merrill said, he's so correct. They just condense and overwhelm the opponent's, opponent's offense, take away all the rhythm and timing from it, and basically steal your soul offensively because you can't do anything well. And what it means by collapsing your offense? Well, I mean by this, you know, the Philadelphia Eagles, when they needed to score, right. what they start doing? You need to get five guys out. You, get, you usually get five guys out. They started getting two and three guys out because everybody else is staying in the block because they can't protect to give Donovan time. You go back to that Saints win, the Dallas Cowboys defense has given up 31 points in their last four games, including Ooh. two straight shutouts to end the regular Money. season. They are Money. a little warm right now. When we continue, the Cincinnati Bengals try to revive their warmth after the frigid shutout they suffered in Jersey at the hands of the Jets in the rematch. And stop me if you've heard this before, but Peyton Manning picked up a postseason honor. In fact, it's like the fourth time he's done it, which is a record. NFL Prime. Mulligan matchup. Uh, Jets this time in Cincinnati. Bengals got shut out to end the regular season at the Meadowlands. Carson Palmer trying to say that in his change. First quarter, Palmer to Cedric Benson. Uh, good call. Takes it down the left side for 19 yards to the 26. Later in the drive, third and six. Pearl Harm Edwards said Lavernius Cole is going to have to be that step up guy, and there he is with the touchdown. Bengals go up 7 0. Later in the first, same score, Jets driving first and 10. And Jets fans, I think you've seen this before. It is Braylon Edwards wide open for the drop. <laughs> Fred, that, you got to make that catch. You only get so many opportunities in playoff football. You have to capitalize on them. That's a perfect throw by the young quarterback. Braylon Edwards has to make that play. Jets had to punt. Second quarter, they're still down 7-0. This was a really good call. Sean Green, the impressive rookie out of Iowa. 39 yards for the equalizer. We're tied at 7. Merrill, through the beauty of ESPN access, please break it down. Would love to. This is taking advantage of an aggressive defense. Misdirection. It looks like floor to the right side, fullback, offensive line. Everybody is coming that way. The Bengals react to it. It looks like it's going that even the defensive end collapses, but now you get Sean Green on the perimeter. And Keller, a great block by the tight end of widening out and creating an alley because you get a seal here and a seal, and a seal there. there. And Green hits his head on the goal post as he scores. Green, 135 yards on 21 carries. Later in the second, third, and six, do not throw on Darrell Rivas. Ocho Cinco, nada. Squat, Bubkus, Rivas with the pick and returns it all the way to the 45-yard line. Miscommunication here, Trent, between Revis and I mean Ocho and Carson. It's a great play, great play by Darrell Revis, getting his head turned around. Carson Palmer can't throw the back shoulder fade when the corner's eyes are on you, but Ocho Cinco has to make a play to stop that from being an interception. Ocho Cinco, no catches in the first half. Jeff's next possession, third and 12. Sanchez, nice strike to Jericho Cotri. 14 yards and a first down. Next play, Sanchez play action rolls out to Dustin Keller, who carries Chinnadum and Dukeway into the end zone. 45 yards for the score. What a great game called by Brian Schottenheimer, the offensive coordinator. Yes, you have heart and vests and jerseys. Jets take a 14-7 lead. Third quarter, Bengals down 14-7. Field goal makes it a one-possession game or a miss makes it not good. 35 yards, no. <sighs> Jets ensuing drive. Sanchez to Thomas Jones. That's a nine-yard touchdown, and the pulling guard was beautiful. We call this power. Oh, baby, we're going to run to this side. We're going to get double teams. Guards are going to pull around. We're going to kick out and get a seal here and a seal there and get right in the alley for a touchdown. 21-7, Allen Fanica, the puller. Fourth quarter, same score. Bengals driving on first down. Palmer to Ocho Cinco. The first catch against Darrell Rivas and the Jets in the last two games. Very next play. 
We suddenly had a ball game. Cedric Benson runs right, 47 yards for the touchdown. The longest run in Bengals postseason history. He had 169 yards, and now we're just down 21-14. Later in the fourth, after a Jets field goal, Palmer to Ocho Cinco. Oh, he almost comes up with a perfect catch. Hey, the biggest games, your biggest players have to make the spectacular play. Ocho Cinco needs to make that play for Carson Palmer and his team in the playoffs. So later in the drive, Shane Graham, just a little, oh no. Oh no, the franchise tag on Shane Graham after last season. Maybe not this season. Shell-shocked and the emotions come out for Chad. Everything they've been through. Classy move by Sanchez to shake down and shake Marvin Lewis's hand. The Jets win it 24 to 14. Sanchez, the fourth quarterback since 1950, rookie, to start and win a playoff game. Of course, we had one just last year in Joe Flacco, who won a pair. By the way, their first win since 2004. And for the second time, a rookie head coach, Rex Ryan, and a rookie quarterback on the same team are also victorious in their postseason debuts. They were good, but it was really that Jets defense again. Unbelievable effort by our defense getting two sacks to win the game. That's in this kind of environment, in this atmosphere, this is it's pretty special. So, um, you know, got nothing to do with me. Uh, maybe I lucked out today, who knows? But this is uh, try and put another one of these games together and just keep playing smart and protect the ball. Like I say, people can think we backed in or whatever. I don't care how we got in. I'm just telling you, we are going to be a tough out and we're going to go into every game thinking we can win it. This was just the first step. In, in what we think is going to be a, a great journey. When you get to this point in the season, uh, man, in the playoffs and so forth, you play better teams, and uh, you got to make plays. And uh, our, our, our downfall today was our inability, I think, at crucial times uh, to make the plays that made the difference. You know, when you play at this level and this end of the year like this, these, these games, you're going to fall off the cliff no matter what at some point until you're the last team. And so it all hurts. Well, it certainly didn't hurt for Mark Sanchez leading the way 12 of 15 for 182 yards. Produced the second best completion percentage in NFL history for any quarterback in his postseason debut with a minimum of 15 throws. Interesting that three of the top five quarterbacks on this list did it as Jets, Sanchez, Ken O'Brien, and of course, Chad Pennington. You know, this was a battle build, Merrill, as a couple of USC quarterbacks. And the rookie certainly outdueled the veteran in Carson Palmer. Well, I think it was how they built offense. You know, and what I mean by that, both these teams ran the football beautifully. Couldn't run the ball any better. But look how the Jets built their offense off of their running game with Sanchez. They did a lot of boot action with him, giving him a, 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 a here or there throw. You know, they didn't put him in the pocket and just say drop back, go three and five steps. Boot. Here, there, throw it away. They used the running game to build on the passing game. Two tight ends, two backs, looks like run, smells like run. No, they do run action. Again, boot again. Now, either or situation and a big play ends up being a touchdown. Doesn't go back in the pocket and just read. Now you got two tight ends, one back, looks like run, smells like run not run another boot action misdirection get the defense flowing one way help your quarterback give him defined reads and then you look at Carson Palmer and what they did with him everything was pure drop back they didn't purely build off the things that they did so well all year their ability to run the football but when you looked at what the Bengals did it was all drop back that's much easier on the defense there's no misdirection you don't take advantage of your ability to run the football and get all of that flow that we saw with the Jets that that ended up for me to be one of the big differences in this game. And once the Bengals lost Chris Henry, they lost that balance in their passing game, that explosive element. And if you would have had something like this to Carson Palmer, even though he was the veteran in this thing, man, I think it would have helped him. And I think it would have helped them create some, some bigger plays and maybe a different outcome for the Bengals. Yeah, you're right. Brian Schottenheimer did a great job. Absolutely. Mark Sanchez in a win-win proposition in this football game. But let's forget, let's not forget, a lot of first-time quarterbacks that have played in the playoffs and the moment was too big, the stage was too big, not for young Mark Sanchez. This is what's going to make him a great player in this league. He's got the stuff it takes to be at his best in the biggest games, and he showed glimpses of it today. Well, we certainly know the Jets' defense has had the stuff. Earlier, you mentioned the Cowboys' defense was 
pretty good. That Jets defense was, again, phenomenal. They really were, and they get the ball back. At the end of the day, what makes the Jets defense so good, they get the ball back, whether it's getting off the field on third down or doing what they do best, creating turnovers. They play with relentless abandon to the person with the ball. They strip it loose. This was a big conversion for the Bengals, right. but the Jets aren't going to quit. They're going to get the ball out, and then they have Darrell Revis. This guy steals the ball from you. They can match him up. you got to be scared throwing the ball his direction. The Jets defense, relentless. They do a great job, but more than anything else, they knock the ball out and they scare offenses because of the relentless pursuit of whoever has the football. That's why they're going to be a tough out because they can get the ball back all day long. And I think that even speaks more to what, how Brian Martin Schottenheimer, the offensive coordinator, handled this because when you have a defense like that, yeah. You could say, ah, let me take some risks. Let me yeah. go ahead. And he didn't do that. By the way, we don't know where the Jets are going to play. If the Patriots win, the Jets will go back to Indianapolis. Interesting. But if the Ravens win, the Jets will head out to San Diego in the divisional round. When we continue on NFL Primetime, we hand out the hardware. Not just any hardware. Postseason hardware. Oh Primetime performers coming up. Leading the way is brought to you by Audi. True in engineering. Weekend primetime performers, Merrill Hodge, who, who got your eye? Man, I'm going to give Anthony Spencer some love. The guy's been dominant the last month, but he is my primetime performer. The way he is relentless, his instincts, the balance that he has brought to Andre uh, to wear on the other side. And I'm going with Dustin Keller, the tight end for the Jets. Three catches, 99 yards, and a touchdown. But more importantly, he made that key block on Sean Green's touchdown run. Relentless in his pursuit of the DB, gets it done. I'm going with Tony Romo. Demons officially exercised since December started. He's played phenomenal. Again, two touchdown passes, no interceptions, leading the Cowboys to their first win since 1996. Hey, uh, Peyton Manning has done something nobody in the history of the NFL has ever done before. He wins his fourth MVP award, and it wasn't even close, getting 39 and a half votes out of a possible 50. Drew Brees got seven and a half votes. Again, multiple sources reporting that Pete Carroll has agreed in principle to become the next head coach of the Seattle Seahawks. He is meeting with the Seahawks on Sunday. This deal could be officially announced as early as Monday. Reported figures, five years, seven million per season. So Pete Carroll is now going to be in charge of Seattle. These guys are in charge of primetime. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Don't forget, special on Sunday, 9 o'clock, ESPN 2.